2011, that the nuclear catastrophe happened. It's already three and a half years. And then this uh, Fukushima Daiichi accident proved that all the nuclear power plants are dangerous. It is destroying the livelihood of uh, human beings. This is really proved that a nuclear power plant is the poison for the mankind. But yesterday, September 10th, the Japan's uh, new nuclear regulatory uh, agency declared that uh, one of the um, nuclear plants in Japan, there are 48 operable nuclear plants in Japan now. So one of uh, uh, two of the reactors, it's a Sendai nuclear power plant located in Kyushu, Kagoshima. So Japan's nuclear regulatory agency declared that uh, this Sendai nuclear plant was safe to be stopped. But uh, there are a lot of uh, controversy about the how evacuation, how evacuate the people. Um, this is a, a volcanic uh, active area. What happened uh, if the, this uh, volcanic activity uh, start uh, very active? There are so many uh, questions about this. Um, I think the uh, case I show the Ministry of uh, Economy, Trade, Industry collected the public comment. And then there are uh, 17,800 comments collected. This reflects that uh, people's concern about the safety of restart of this Sendai uh, plant. But again, the government crushed us. Government is squashed us like a little bugs again. Same as the secrecy law, same as the reinterpretation of the uh, peace constitution. Whatever the they collect uh, public comment, we respond, and the majority people are against of it. But they just crush it. They ignore us. It's so res uh, respectable, so this uh, regard of the public uh, will, public comment. And for example, uh, many people concern about how to evacuate. Um, they said that uh, each local um, district have to decide those. So there are no answer for that. And then how about if the uh, volcanic uh, activity comes active. And they said that um, if it happened like that, uh, the operator will remove the uh, fuels rod. But they just said uh, remove the fuel rods, but they don't know how. And they don't know where to move. There are no answer for that, but 
Japanese Nuclear Regulatory Agency said, okay, to restart. This is an uh, outrageous decision. And this is totally uh, uh, disrespect for the uh, public, our Japanese people. And uh, they were not only Sendai uh, restart, but also uh, very uh, suddenly that siloed uh, cancer among the children increased to up to 103 kids. The rate is uh, one per uh, uh, one million people, but this is way high percentage. But still, uh, prefecture and then government are not uh, admit that is any connection of this epidemic with Fukushima um, nuclear power plant accident. As uh, they said is because the Chernobyl, uh, after four or five years, uh, side of the cancer appeared. That's why this is not related, but that's a wrong, wrong uh, point of view. Because Chernobyl, yes, from the Soon after, uh, thyroid cancer kids appeared, but in the four and five years, started to jump up so much. That is a jump up and then started more cancer after four or five years. So government really have to do something about those children who are still living in a dangerous area. The children are most um, uh, susceptible for the radiation. Children and the pregnant women and infant, still people are living in a dangerous area. We really need to relocate those people to the safer place. Also, um, the, uh, Sad story is that uh, workers in uh, uh, now uh, very hardly working at the uh, Fukushima Daiichi plant. Those subcontractors, even sub and subcontractors, uh, they are not getting enough money. So that the uh, four of, of those laborer people a suit, uh, of course, the TEPCO and then um, 30 or 40 different company. Um, if the abuse for the uh, people working there uh, continue like this, abuse means ripping off their salary for the uh, you know big company above them, so that the uh, lower uh, those labor people bottom of the pyramid, the people are not getting enough money. Even they are not getting a special, uh, special, I think, uh, it's a payment of the dangerous work, which TEPCO um, promised to give. That is uh, $1,000, I think. Um, they are not getting those money, they said. So they uh, sued company. Hope this um, situation uh, change because if this situation um, continue, he said, one of our plaintiffs said that maybe uh, not um, skillful good labors are gone and uh, this uh, containing work is another even similar case, 20 years, 30 years to continue. Um, there are no workers to work here. So, um, seems like Japan is, for me, going uh, wrong direction. The propelling the uh, nuclear policy, which restart many plant and uh, exporting the uh, nuclear power plant, and then uh, try to keep nuclear plant as the possibility of the nuclear weapon. Um, I can see that uh, Abe governing
parties uh, proceeding of the militarism. So let's watch out and then let's uh, voice our out loud to protest for the Japanese government. Thank you. That's Steve. Steve Zelter. Steve Zelter. Thank you for coming out today, and thank you, Chizu, for helping to organize today. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco, and we're in the shade, too, so that's nice. It's hot out there. But we're here today to, again, come to the Japanese consulate and let the Japanese government know that people in the United States, people in the Bay Area, are demanding that the nuclear plants not be restarted in Japan. And you would think that that would be a simple thing after what happened in Fukushima, but the government, the Abe administration, seems intent on reopening the plants. And a, a woman came out here earlier who works in the building, and she said she supports what we're doing. And uh, she said, why are they restarting the plants after what they've been through in Fukushima? How could they afford another Fukushima in Japan? And that's precisely what will happen if they reopen the plants. There will be other earthquakes in Japan. There will other be other disasters. And we have to say that it's unacceptable and the Japanese government should not be allowed to restart the nuclear plants. Then we are saying that not only for the people of Japan, but the people of the United States and California, and that's what the woman said, that people in California are being contaminated too because that nuclear radioactive water that's coming into the ocean is ending up in California, the shores of California. So the issue of nuclear power is not just an issue for the people of Japan, it's an issue for the people of the world. And why do these companies, even in California, at San Luis, at San Luis Obispo, where Diablo uh, Canyon plant is, Diablo Valley Canyon plant, say that they want to keep the plants going? Well, what's behind it is money, profit. They make money from this, this nuclear power industry. And what we believe is that it should be public. It shouldn't be run by private businesses. That we're not interested in profit. Energy for, should be for the people and the use of the people, not to make profit for these big companies. Now, if people notice, PG&E has had many, many ads saying how wonderful they are, and their workers are wonderful, and the PG&E workers are good people. But the company owners and the profiteers are not good because we've had an explosion in San Bruno. We've had nuclear whistleblowers at the Diablo, Valley, uh, Diablo Canyon plant be fired for whistleblowing. And this is recently what happened with the Nuclear Regulatory Agency. An expert at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission said that there is an earthquake underneath Diablo Canyon. And that report was hidden, hidden from the public for over a year and a half. They would not release that, which in itself should be criminal. Uh, here's an expert who's being paid to be in charge of health and safety for the public. He has a report that says it's dangerous, and then they hide the report. And just yesterday, the government announced that they don't care about the report, everything is safe. Well, we think we know who the nuclear regulatory industry represents. It represents the nuclear industry, not the people, not the public. And it's the same in Japan. The nuclear commission there says it's safe to open the plants. This is a lie. This is not telling the people the truth about the danger of nuclear power. So we have to say to the uh, Prime Minister Abe and to the consulate here who's afraid to come out, the consulate officials are afraid that we're going to bite them or something if they come out, you know, they're afraid to take a letter. You would think that, you know, they'd be uh, accepting to take a letter, but they won't even take a letter here. What are they afraid about? What is the Japanese government afraid of that they can't even take a letter from us? I think they're afraid of the truth, of the truth getting out. But we're going to continue to come back, we're going to continue to educate, and our voices will be heard regardless of the effort to silence us. So I say shut the plants down, shut the nukes now, shut the plants down, shut the nukes now, shut the plants down, shut the nukes down, shut the plants down, shut the nukes now. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Every uh, 11 of months, uh, we are writing a letter to Prime Minister directly, and then hopefully we hand it to a uh, council, uh, Japanese, but they refused to take uh, 
in hand for a while, but then they now take it, but not on the rally day. So uh, just today, uh, the Jason uh, Kamali wrote very nice letter to uh, Prime Minister Abe. So uh, I like to him to uh, read loud, please. Thank you. So Jason Kamali. Thank you, Jason. Dear Shinzo, how many are the wonderful things derived from or characterized by the great nation of Japan? How many good things come to mind when we think of your country, even if we have never seen your shores? The land of the rising sun, of the resilient people, land of the mannered, of the humble often of the sweet and cultured, land of the origin of haiku, and so a haiku or two. <laughs> From Konishi Raizan, who writes, you rice field maidens, the only thing not muddy are the songs you sing, which symbolically and contextually speaking, reminds the whole world of this. The disasters which have left Japan quite muddy sometimes, symbolically, but also often literally terribly muddy, have been profound indeed when they have struck. My understanding is that to this very day, some of the muddy plains of Nagasaki and Hiroshima still radiate with the dirty energy of atomic explosions. The ground, the dirt, the very mud in these places still hum slightly with energy and knowledge gone wrong, misused. And it was the Japanese people left to reach, to strive, to pick up the pieces, to plant the rice again, to sing in the mud of terrible, difficult days, to grow, to harvest, to rise, yet from despair, singing songs in the muddy madness. Resilience, to rise again, like the sun rises anew each day. And so has Japan been faithful to the task against the overwhelming opposition of calamity like nuclear holocaust. More recently, like that of the Fukushima disasters, which left whole ranges of the land filthy, broken, muddy, unusable. An earthquake, perhaps foreseeable, but certainly unmanageable by any aspect of any handbook. Then a tidal wave, a coursing flood, a broken, disassembling, radiating nuclear power plant. A muddy situation of a much dirtier, more dangerous caliber. I could write about the effects of that disaster, I could write about thyroid cancer, of misplaced persons, of misused citizenry towards the cleanup. I could write of secrecy laws that seek to disinform, but all these things, Shinzo, you know about, or should. Instead, I'll use this haiku to reference the great spirit of the nation after its repeated muddy holocaust. Like the songs of the women in the rice fields, the spirit of your people carry through the disasters. You could be, you could help be part of that resilience, that radiance of the rising sun that is the Japanese people, Shinzo. But only if you choose to be part of the solution instead of making the mud. That means pr primarily better energy choices, relegating fossil fuels and dangerous nuclear energies to a bygone era. And now from Basho, who writes this haiku. When the dusk sets in and the hawks can no longer see, the quail cries loudly, which, contextually and symbolically speaking, reminds the world of this. War, violence, is madness. War is darkness. And the day of war is over. It goes now with its bloody, sometimes atomic weapons, creeping, limping off into the dusk of history. War, which is blindness, which is darkness anyway, couldn't see all that well to begin with. Now the hawk, of course, is a bird of prey, which fulfills its own role in nature, secures its own place in a type of natural hierarchy. But a man, a nation is not a hawk, though many such as these might be described as hawkish. Instead, the quail, like mankind, situates close to the ground, mostly flightless. Yet the quail's cry is one of triumph, not terror. Your people, Shinzo, like the quail of Basho's haiku, want to cry triumphantly that war is over that they need not fear the hawk of militaries or machines come to kill, or to send sons and daughters shuffled off to foreign outposts to die for other nations. To broaden your constitution, to lengthen the day, 
the already long, cold season of war, is to serve the ignoble hawkish of man, but without the natural hawk's majesty or purpose. Inspired by the beauty of a Japanese woman, a most famous American songwriter once sang, war is over if you want it. I want it to be Shinzo. I want peace and pleasure and true freedom. Do you? Thank you. The next speaker, uh, this letter will deliver to uh, uh, Ms. Hayakawa Consul directly uh, next week, Thursday, 9.30. And then Jason will deliver directly. Next uh, speaker is Cecil Pineda. Please, come. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's afternoon here in San Francisco. My name is Cecile Pineda. I'm the author of Devil's Tango, How I Learned the Fukushima Step by Step. I want to talk a little bit today about a California reactor called Diablo Canyon. It is located roughly between here, that is San Francisco, and Los Angeles. It is the last remaining reactor in the state of California, and it is located directly on top of several earthquake faults, some of which have been discovered only recently. It poses a terrific danger, as much a danger as Fukushima posed in Japan, in your country. About a year ago, a report was filed that essentially talks about the fault lines at Diablo Canyon and pres its presumption of nuclear safety. But this report has been buried by the American Nuclear Regulatory Commission for over one year. And it, it was not available to the general public. It has been released only recently by Friends of the Earth and reported on by the Associated Press and the great Enviro journalist Carl Grossman. Thank you so much for going around, people. As well as by the Nuclear Information and Resource Services and Beyond Nuclear. Dr. Peck has a doctorate in nuclear engineering, and he happens to have been Diablo Canyon's chief on-site inspector for five years. He's now a senior instructor at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Technical Training Center in Tennessee. His status as a current Nuclear Regulatory Commission employee makes his critical report highly unusual and alarming. Not only that, but it puts him at risk in terms of losing his position and his job. Nuclear engineer Arne Gunderson has warned about sea level intake pipes like those at Diablo Canyon. When the tsunami struck Fukushima, he writes, the cooling equipment along the shoreline was turned into a scrapyard of twisted metal. Another issue at Diablo Canyon is fire. David Lockbaum of the Union of Concerned Scientists writes, there's never ever been compiled safety regulations, not even for a second by mistake. The one-two punch of earthquake tsunami caused Fukushima, Lockbaum wrote. A one-two punch of earthquake and fire could cause Jabalo Canyon to explode, but it won't be an accident. Not when the company and its alleged regulator both know that the plant does not meet earthquake and fire safety regulations. That is not the cause of an accident. That is possibly criminal negligence, but it's at least malicious mayhem. 
it is certainly not an accident. So we in the United States suffer from the same lack of representation that the people in Japan suffer from. Not only that, but your nuclear regulatory agency, like our Nuclear Regulatory Commission, is a shill for the nuclear industry. Recently, there is a petition going around in the United States demanding that two nuclear activists be added to the commission, to the number of commissioners at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission here in the United States. And we are very much hoping that that will eventually occur. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Pineda. Namori, would you like? you want to? Maureen Hartman is the next speaker. I was impressed when Chizo Hamada mentioned the children that were endangered near Fukushima by radioactivity, etc. We all think of Jesus' words, suffer the little children to come unto me. It is unchristian that children should be endangered for the sake of those who profit from nuclear power in Japan and also in the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. And I guess the next speaker will be the Paul Kagan. Yeah, five minutes. Just let me know. Because we have to dance. I, I want to give you that. That's right on. Okay, just let me know. All right. Okay. Hello. Um, why will Japan never reopen the atomic reactors that have been shut down? Why? Because Prime Minister Naoto Khan passed a law called the Solar Feed In Tariff, which pays. Japanese homeowners, 53 cents a kilowatt hour for harvesting solar energy and feeding it onto the grid. This has created thousands of jobs in Japan and has created a tremendous cash flow in the, in the Japanese economy. Okay, how is it that Germany is able to shut down all of its atomic energy plants? Germany is shutting that down. I just came back from three weeks in Germany and I asked probably 100 people in Germany on video, did you know Germany is shutting down all the atomic plants in Germany? Half the people I talked to in Germany did not know that Germany is shutting down its atomic plants. How many people in here know that Germany is shutting down all of its plants? Okay, how did Germany do this? One person wrote a law called the Solar Feed-In Tariff Law of Germany that paid 99 cents a kilowatt hour to farmers harvesting solar energy and homeowners. This is creating $500 a month income for some farmers that have hundreds and hundreds of panels on their fields. This is how Germany is shutting down all atomic energy plants. How many people here in the sound of my voice know that Germany has banned fracking? How many people know that? I ask that question all the time in the United States and I have never met anybody yet who knows that Germany has banned fracking because the American media, including the environmental media, does not want to mention it. Why? How did they do it? A guy named Herman Scheer, a young 42-year-old guy, was scared by Chernobyl and he wrote a law, the Solar Payment Policy Law, that pays the farmers of Germany. Um, so why don't we do that here? Because everybody's told America is a different place. This is a country where you can't pass laws like that that put the oil companies out of business. I've got news for you. In your lifetime, every oil company is going to be shut down. And how are we going to do it? With solar laws. Every coal company is going to be shut down in the next 10 years. And how are we going to do it? with solar payment policy laws. That's what's happening. That's the revolution that is sweeping the world, and it is shutting down all gas fracking worldwide. How many jobs have been created worldwide 
since 1991 thanks to solar. Anybody want to guess how many jobs have been created by solar in the last, what, 15 years? Six million jobs are now held in the solar industry by workers. 450,000 of those jobs are in Germany alone. More people work in the German solar industry than work in the auto industry. More people work in solar in Germany than in the engineering industry. That is heavy. That's phenomenal. That's the situation that we have right now in the world with the rise of solar. I just came from a conference called Disrupt, in which corporations are talking about, uh, these IT, Silicon Valley corporations are talking about disrupting the medical field with new information technology. The information technology is the third revolution sweeping the world. The solar revolution is the fourth revolution that is sweeping the world. It is going to change everything that you now see in the next 10 years. It's going to shut down all fossil fuel, including the atomic energy plants. So uh, that's why Japan is going 100% solar and renewable. They have no choice. We have no choice. Diablo Canyon is going to melt down if we don't shut it down. So we need to put a solar payment policy on the ballot for San Francisco, for Berkeley, Redwood City, and every city in this state. The New York Supreme Court just passed a ruling. This was the Supreme Court of New York. A ruling said that cities can ban fracking. The governor of the state of California is going to sign a law next week banning plastic bags in California. Why? Because one city, Fairfax, passed a law, what, years ago, that said we're banning plastic bags. And everybody said, you can't do that. You can't do that. Well, that's what, in Germany, everybody told Hermann Scheer when he said, I'm going to ban atomic energy in Germany by building solar-powered houses in Germany. He said that in 1985. Everybody, 86, 87. Everybody thought Hermann Scheer was crazy. Hermann Scheer flipped the whole German economy from atomic and oil to solar. That one person created this revolution that is sweeping the world today. And it's important to understand this, that you can do it. A small committee of five people could do it right here in San Francisco. So we're, we're trying to put it on the ballot. So I'd like to thank Naato Khan for putting the law up. I'd like to thank uh, Angela Merkel for switching sides. And I'm predicting the Koch brothers will switch sides this in the next 12 months. Angela Merkel switched sides on the question of atomic energy. Why did Angela Merkel switch sides? Because of Fukushima. So I'm predicting the Koch brothers will switch sides as soon as uh, Diablo Canyon melts down. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Let's see, we are planning to have a dance now. Actually, we are planning to go to the park, but uh, the dance teacher will have to leave uh, in a, a few minutes. So we somehow managed to dance here. Please uh, be circle first. And when we get to be circle, let's have a moment of silence. We're going to be circle and moment of silence. Then after that, uh, proceed the uh, dance.
out of the sky into your body. Spread in your toes to the toes. And release. Gather the young ones in the center. They don't do anything. But hey, the body is innocent hey, through your heart. Mm. And release.
Thank you. I think uh, this is a uh, uh, like a new job movement we had for the last like a uh, 26 times. Sometimes nice. Thank you, Hiroko chan. Um, so we don't give up. We got the energy now from Hiroko chan's dance, and then we uh, meet here again uh, October 11th, which is Saturday. Actually, consulate is closed, but we meet here, then we march to uh, either Union Square, just in Hanan Plaza or somewhere. So please be here, 3 o'clock, October 11th. Uh, many people, several people come from all the way from Los Angeles to support us. So hope the local people uh, attend here. Um, let's have a huge, uh, rally next year and then we will show that our will that we are not be silent about the Abe uh, governing party we are against the nuclear power plant we really don't want to uh, restart any of them in Japan the first one Sendai uh, nuclear power plant is very much uh, now facing risk to restart. Um, if it's everything on schedule, I think that Abe, Abe is the last person to make a decision to go. That will be maybe December this year, and then next year, early uh, January or so, Sendai uh, nuclear plant will be restarted. So we must block this current. So, Please uh, join again next month. Shut down all the nukes. 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 Shut down Diablo Canyon. Shut down Diablo Canyon. Gandhi statue behind the ferry building at 6 o'clock. Uh, on this day, uh, 1906, Gandhi declared his nonviolent resistant uh, uh, tactics. And uh, we first read poetry at the Gandhi statue in 2006 on his birthday, October 2nd. <laughs> and I said, we'll have the press conference on 9-11 because pacifist ends in fist. That's how I think. Anyways, uh, 
9-11-2006 came and it was, we discovered that, that was the 100th anniversary of Gandhi declaring nonviolent resistance. So we've been reading, we've been doing Take Back Gandhi's 9-11. Some nasty people showed up on his birthday, minorities against Hinduism, but they're gone. They, they've been last heard from. The other thing, of course, is today is the anniversary of the um, uh, takeover of, uh, of Chile by Kissinger and Nixon and the, uh, and, uh, the destruction of the Allende administration. But I think very much tied in with what we're doing here today, that was really the day that um, Kissinger and Milton Friedman and all those started free market economics. We've had 40 years of uh, supply side, uh, neoliberal, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I think its time has ended, and uh, I, I like what uh, Paul had to say about how these people will come around for um, solar power, and I think that uh, uh, the uh, uh, supply ec side economics will, will go to, at least we must try to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Thank you. One announcement, on Sunday, September 21st, you know there's gonna be this meeting in the United Nations where everybody's gonna be, for those of you that can't jet set out to New York whenever you feel like it, we're gonna be holding a rally here in San Francisco at the Labor Temple, 2940 16th Street in Mission at 3 p.m. on Sunday, and there will be a, uh, the, the Redstone Building. The Redstone Building. The, the Labor Temple, okay, that's Sunday the 21st. Thank you. Thank you. See you again.